Trail runners, welcome to Chasing Gold. On this edition, we are heading down to Texas for the Bandera edition of the 100K. We will be chatting with some of the best trail runners in our sport, trying to get themselves one of those two coveted golden tickets headed to Western States. Today on the show, we welcome Catherine Short. Catherine has some big time wins in 2022, including the Quebec Mega Trail 52K and Canyons 50K. Catherine runs with Hoka and is a member of the Swap Athlete Team with David and Megan Roche. Catherine, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming on. First off, let's tell the, the viewers, where are you coming to us from today? Uh, I am living in Maui, Hawaii. So, yeah. Awesome. awesome. And originally? Uh, Half Moon Bay, British Columbia in Canada. Trading in the maple syrup for macadamia nuts. <laughs> <laughs> well, the weather, I would say, but yes. <laughs> Cool. And how long have you been out there? Uh, for about a year now. Do you love it? Yes. It's, it's a good place to be, for sure. Sure. Um, and what what is the climate like right now, these days? Um, it's winter time here, so we definitely get like ebbs and flows of really nice days. We also get big monsoon rains. And, uh, a few days ago, we had a super big storm with like really heavy winds and and rain, of course, I had a BC friend coming to run for those few days, so she she got the full weather picture. Uh, but the day she left, it turned uh, in Celsius, 27, 28, 29 sort of thing, and super humid, so it's it's been been sweaty. <laughs> been sweaty. I feel like that kind of rain makes for some, uh, some pretty muddy trails as well, uh, especially out in Hawaii. For sure. For sure. Nice. Any interest of running the Hurt 100 in January? That's out in Hawaii. Um, probably not at this point. No. Um, I did just run part of the Hurt series. They had a 30 miler. Mm -hmm. uh, really fun. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm definitely building more into that sort of like high humidity, long racing stuff because it's it's very challenging. So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely more of like a 50 to 100k athlete at this point. Um. So yeah, just that slow build into those long, longer races. But uh, yeah, maybe one day, but at this point, no. <laughs> sure. Okay, let's talk about that, right? Because you have some very impressive 50-ish K victories. Um, and I, you know, when I look at, you know, just some, some internet research, it looks like you've, you came out to Black Canyon for the 100K this past year and maybe didn't have the best day for yourself. What, what? pieces of the f jumping up from 50 to 100k make you nervous what pieces are you actively working on in your training so that when you show up to bandera you feel like you've got it at least pretty confident in your plan yeah so uh last year when i did black canyon that was kind of the first time i had attempted a 100k race i've done some fkt efforts well i guess just one fkt effort uh that was 100k the year before that so or around a year before that so I was uh yeah I guess I just I had not a ton of experience in it um I think the big things that have really changed for me since last year are are focusing on kind of dialing more into the body uh I think last year I definitely wasn't fueling enough uh giving myself enough rest at those eight stations I probably went out way too hard uh to mm -hmm. this year definitely trying to kind of work on all of those things in training constantly so um fueling kind of thinking that it's a, a long race or or training day regardless of kind of how long it is i mean i'm not going out popping gels on like a <laughs> <laughs> but trying to actively stay fueled all the time um and i think that really just helps with everything so that's been a big uh pushing piece with david and megan i'm very grateful to them for that Kind of advice and um yeah it's it's hard to see when you're like in an introspective but when someone else is watching you and giving you advice from the outside i think it's very helpful so yeah, yeah. that's the big thing i think i've changed 
for sure. And like when you're when you're actively working on that and training, like does that look like are you trying to target like a gel every X minutes or is there a certain number you're targeting per hour or how can you like actively track that, right? Because it's like you need to know what's working, what's not working. You can't just be like, ah, I don't know, I had four gels in my run, it felt great. Like, so do you actively do that? Are you looking at times and doses um, for fueling or how does it look in training and racing? I, yeah, I, I started using Goo Roctane, the liquid form of it, uh, in mm -hmm. bottle. Because in Hawaii, it's so hot all the time. Like, you have to be running with electrolytes and water pretty much anytime you run. So I've been using that a lot, um, which is really nice because you can make it really strong, you can make it really weak, um, and it kind of gives you everything you need. It has caffeine, it has calories, it has like literally kind of everything. So um, yeah, that's been a big, big that I use all the time. Um, and trying to figure out like what bottles to use, because uh, obviously in Hawaii it's, it's really hot and it's really humid, so I've been running into issues with bottles like getting moldy and then that mm. kind of like all sorts of other things so yeah it's it's a constant testing game for me over here uh at this point i'm running with two handheld bottles on both long runs with goo roctane um and try to like create loops where i can fill up for water because yeah after about 10 miles i definitely need to have some more water electrolytes or or fuel but it's it's not something i like look at my watch a, a ton to record I mostly just kind of like try to self-monitor if I start to get really unmotivated or if I really just hate my life I'll try to get some more fuel in or uh, that those types of signs are more kind of what I read so. sure sure and from um from like a, a training perspective perspective the architecture of training and all that how long have you been working with David and how does the training differ from what you were doing before? Um, well, I grew up a long distance cyclist, so uh, I've always had a really big interest in uh, like long distance endurance sports. My parents were really supportive when I was younger, so I started racing like marathon mountain bike when I was maybe like 13 or 14, like pretty young. Um, so they, they definitely have like nurtured that whole endurance sport thing my whole life. Um, I've been with David, I've been coaching with David and Megan for a year now. So um, I think it was like Christmas, exactly Christmas day last year that we started working together. So uh, it's been a really amazing year. Uh, the coaches I worked with before were also absolutely so helpful and phenomenal, but I think David and Megan just have such a a different kind of experience with their athletes and they see so many professional runners all the time and, and get that um, input and information all the time that I think that they just they have the best perspective on on what's happening so I I trust them implicitly even even days where I'm like I don't know if I should you know take this extra rest day or whatever or I'm fighting it they're they're always right so I think really listening to someone else has been also a, bit, a big game changer um, the coaches I, I think I had in the past, maybe I didn't fully trust, so maybe did my own thing when I didn't really see eye to eye on the things they were advising. So, um, yeah, I'd say that's been a big change as well. <laughs> sure. Yeah, big shout out to the SWAP team. I feel every time we do Chase and Gold, half the, uh, half the athletes are, are coming from that team. So, a great team David and Megan have put together. Um, Let's talk about race day. So we know the Bandera 100K, it has two loops of 50K. So this is, you know, from a coaching perspective, when I look at this, this is a great way for athletes in general to learn some lessons about themselves and how they race because it's two loops. So there are splits that you can compare one to another. This is not a point to point race where you can kind of hide, hey, I paced poorly. What is your pacing strategy going in? Are you trying to close fast are you trying to hold an effort from the start are you trying to lead a pack are you trying to are you concerned with what the lead pack might be doing or are you doing your own thing just kind of walk us through briefly what race day looks like from a strategic point uh for you yeah so the way that i kind of see racing i definitely don't like to like look at who else is, is in the field or 
or anything like that. I mostly like to look at um, how frequently those those aid stations are and divide it up that way. So I think about like what I'm going to need between those aid stations. I think about the temperature. I think about the weather. Um, I my game plan is to try to stick to an easier pace. I would say out of the gate, not really trying to worry too much about who else is around me. Um, after that first 50k loop, I think I'll probably do like a change of shoes just to get a refresh. That's something I've been practicing as well, uh, doing longer runs here. So just trying to sort of stimulate feeling that like fresh, total fresh start again, which I think really helps. So taking that extra couple minutes at, at that after that first loop to really reset. Um, and then that second loop is, is where I hope to rip it up. I, nice. I don't want I don't want to do any damage in the first lap for, for you know, myself or anybody else. So, yeah, I think uh, loop two will be where it gets spicy. I love it. I love it. Yeah, the course itself, you probably know, it's uh, it's pretty relentless climbing. None too big, you know, 200, 300 foot climbs. And then you have that sort of the middle section there, Yaya Aid, which is what is usually called the racetrack where it's flatter. Um, do you think either of those sections play to your strengths? Do you think like you have a bigger advantage on those uh, punchy technical climbs? Or do you feel like the flatter section towards the middle of each loop, which section do you think plays to your strengths? I think uh, training here, I, like before I would say definitely those like more technical sections if I was coming out of BC, but here, I don't have a car, so I can be on foot everywhere. I run the roads a ton. Um, so I think, like, run the roads to the trail. So I think I have experience kind of everywhere. I think this race is going to be really kind of set up for what I do all the time. Um, I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I'm excited. <laughs> I, I really enjoy both types of running. Um, I've been wearing the Tecton X, uh, Hoka, like the carbon shoe, and I wear it everywhere like for hybrid runs for trail runs i think the world of them so i have full confidence in no matter what the terrain uh they even tread mud well in hawaii so nice I, yeah i'm feeling pretty excited <laughs> awesome well that is a great great little intro into what is the 10 question fast-paced fart lick round Catherine, are you ready yes. all right I think you answered question one, but we're asking, what sneakers will you be wearing at the Bandera 100K? The uh, Texan X. Love it. All right, favorite local trail and why? Uh, the Lahaina Poly Trail. It's hot, it's steep, it's got views forever, so it's number one. Cool. <laughs> what about race day superstitions? Do you have any race day superstitions? N nothing. <laughs> so. How about with the New Year's coming up? How about New Year's resolution? Hmm. Yeah, I definitely. I got lots of goals this year. I think just trying to be like overall healthier is is kind of my goal. I want to continue to maintain like just general balance in life and try to not you know go too hard in running or or any of those aspects of my life. So yeah, I've, I've got lots of. What's a secret personal goals, I would say. That, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm not too vocal about them at this point, but, but maybe soon. Fair enough. All right, finish this sentence. Don't mess with... Um, me when I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> There's a famous saying, don't mess with Texas, so I appreciate it. Me when I'm hungry. I would agree with that. All right, perfect lead into question six, pre-race breakfast. Uh, really depends what I ate the night before. I would say on a race morning, for a long race morning, I'm going to probably be feeling pretty hard. Maybe like English muffin with peanut butter and honey and a coffee. On a faster race day, probably more like just a couple of gels and sure. coffee. So yeah, we'll be eating up for sure. All right, if you get to choose the song to start Bandera 100K, what song are you choosing to walk out to? Hmm. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't have an answer right now. <laughs> All right, we'll let you pass. If you think of one before the end, you can let us know. All right. All right, they say everything is bigger in Texas. What one Texan item do you hope this rings true for? Uh, the podium? <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> All right, how about, you got two questions left. Secret weapon on race day. What do you got? Any secret weapons in your arsenal? Uh, I always run with a rabbit bra that has the, the foam pocket in the back. Perfect. I think that's pretty secret, amazing tool for storing stuff. So that would be my weapon. Good answer. <laughs> Last question, what place are you finishing the Bandera 100K in? First to second. Yes, <laughs> love it. Catherine, thank you for coming on. We will see you in Texas. Yeehaw! Thank you for having me. <laughs>